Peace be with you. I'm going to tell you about the disease of a spirit that afflicts most of us and that most of us aren't even aware of. And that disease is manifested by our propensity to abuse those that love us. We as human beings, when we don't experience immediate consequences for our bad behavior, we tend to do more of it. And when people love us, they are more prone to tolerate our bad, bad behavior and therefore we are more prone to take advantage of them, to say hurtful words to them, to really abuse them day after day and year after year. And yet we can still walk around this uh, world and feel as we are good human beings. And we all do it, without, without exception. I don't care who you are, we all do it. And I'm going to give you a couple examples. The first example I'm going to talk about is our own parents, right? The love of a parent is probably as of an unconditional love as it comes here in this world. Parents love their kids, and they deal with a lot of disrespect from their children eventually, unless their kids are raised correctly. Think about it this way. Would you let me disrespect your parents? Would you let me call them names, tell them how annoying they are, tell them how stupid they are? Would you let me do any of that? Would you let me do that in front of you? Most of the times, the answer is no. I don't think uh, any human being would allow another, a stranger to disrespect their parents, especially not in front of them. And the fact is, your parents didn't do anything for me. They didn't feed me, feed me. They didn't protect me when I was weak. They didn't help me with anything. So if anyone has the right to disrespect them, it's me because I don't owe them anything. And yet that would bother you. But when we do it to our own parents, we don't see that as bothersome. We see it as justified. And I will explain why we see it as justified. We see these people because they love us. Because there is no consequence, we see ourselves as justified. We see ourselves as having the right to do that to them. And you say, well, they made me angry. They, made, they said something stupid. But guess what? If a stranger on the street that's bigger than you, that's stronger than you, that might be crazier than you, that might be more armed than you, said those same things to you, you would control your temper. So it wasn't what they said. They didn't say anything extra special that make you lose your, to make you lose your temper to say those words. It's just that you are subconsciously aware that there are no consequences. So you abuse them. It's not that you are brave. It's not that they pushed you over some edge. It's that, that you are just a coward, just like me, just like everyone else, that is prone to abuse people that show them love. And that is a disease of a spirit that we all need to fix before we die. Because that behavior is a testament against us. Look, God says in the Quran, in the 17th chapter, in regards to our parents, verse 23 and 24, And your Lord has commanded that you shall serve none but him, and goodness to your parents. If either or both of them reach old age with you, do not say to them as much as, Oof, a slighter gesture of annoyance. Nor berate them, nor talk down to them, but address them with respect. And be humble towards them and say, My Lord, have compassion on them, have mercy on them, for they raised me when I was a child. Why did God say this to us? Because God is God knows who we are. God knows we are so prone to abuse love, and God knows that there is no more no closer to unconditional love than our parents. So we are specifically told how to fix that character trait, and this is what we are supposed to strive to be to, you know, strive to be. This is what we're supposed to strive towards. And this is found in other uh, avenues of our life as well. This disease manifests itself whenever we think that we can get away with it and know that we got, we, with God we cannot get away with it. When you go to work, right, you, if you, there's someone you, you consider beneath you, you walk by a janitor and you know, you're a big shot CEO or, or you have employees and they do something stupid and then you berate them, you go off on them. Why? Because you can you can that's the only reason why. And guess what? That same person, let's say your, your employee makes a mistake or your subordinate makes a mistake, and then you go off on them. In your mind, you went off on them because you deserved it. They deserved it. But when you make a mistake and your boss goes off on you, they didn't go, go off on you because uh, they, you made a mistake. They went off on you because they are an asshole. That is how our mind perceives the world, and that is why our minds are corrupt, and we have to acutely be aware of this. We can't consider ourselves better than others. We, we really have to fight this blindness that is in all of our hearts. And that is what Islam is. Look, all this temper that you, could, you would lose with people who you, you know, are weaker than you physically or you somehow are beneath you in the social pecking order or whatever. And you would say, oh, they deserved it because they made me mad. 
if a cop or your boss disrespects you in a much worse manner, guess what? You can still control your temper. So you know, you're a testament to your... That behavior is a testament before God that you are guilty, that I am guilty. And we have to be aware of that. We can't think that we're better than people. God says in the Quran, in the 49th chapter of the Quran, verses 11 and 12, O you who believe, let not people ridicule or, or laugh at other people. Perhaps they may be better than them. Nor women... Uh, on other women, perhaps they may be better than them. And do not fault, fault, find fault with your own people nor call each other by nicknames. Evil is a bad name after faith, and whoever does not change, these are the unjust. O you who believe, avoid most assumptions, for surely in some cases assumptions are sin. And do not spy on each other nor talk behind each other's back. Do you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? But know you are horrid. And be careful of your duty to God. Surely God is oft returning. Merciful. All of us need to be careful of our duty to God and strive to be just people. And in that struggle, it is very, very important for us to be acutely aware of this disease that sits in our hearts. Because although we may not experience the consequences of our behavior every time in this world, in this dunya, we are going to experience the consequences of our behavior in the hereafter. Do yourself a favor. And become the type of a person that God wants you to be. And be just and fair with all other people, including your own parents. And strive to reciprocate love with love. Don't take advantage of it because you can't. And I know it's hard because I suffer from the same disease. But I think whoever strives to fix this will be far better than they were when they were completely ignorant of this and when they made excuses for themselves. Peace be with you.